Greetings and welcome to LGR Oddware, where we take a look at hardware and software that is odd, forgotten, and obsolete, and sometimes spherical. This is uh, the Titans Sphere that we're looking at today by SGRL from the late 90s. And it's one of the, uh, the many different 3D gaming peripherals that came out back then to try and make controlling 3D games better, <laughs> or at least, I don't know, spherical. <laughs> Let's just take a look at this thing. All right, this is the SGRL Sgirl. We're gonna say SGRL. Titan Sphere, introduced in late 1998, or kind of early 1999, more likely, for $129.99 in the US. And yeah, that is a Titan's plural right there. There's no apostrophe. It's not the Titan's Sphere, it's Titan Sphere. I mean, Atlas was a Titan in Greek mythology, famous for holding a sphere. I assume maybe that's where the name was supposed to come from, but why is there no apostrophe? I don't know. A lot of things about this are confusing. Um, in fact, let's just get to uh, this right here. I mean, this thing is practically made for oddware, like the top quote on here. This may be the oddest <laughs> game controller ever and the biggest and the coolest. Apparently it's a new industry standard, not a joystick, not a gamepad or steering wheel. It is Titan Sphere. K, whatever that means. It's not really a sphere exactly. It's kind of spheroid, but it's like a sphere with the sides chopped off and there's joysticks on there, but it's, it's not a joystick. In fact, it's time to throw away your joystick. <laughs> just, just throw it away. You don't need it anymore. This is so much better. That's right. This thing is definitely not based. It is baseless. Ergonomic hand controls, natural hand movements, comfortable. This is like, it's so vague. It doesn't really tell you what the advantages are, except that somehow it's supposed to be better. Well, I mean, it uses existing game or operating system drivers, so I guess that's good. But um, there's a, it's it's just such a a solution in search of a problem type of deal. And there were a lot of these things. If you remember the Space Tech Space Orb 360 was previously featured on Oddware. It's kind of similar sort of to that in concept in the fact that it's supposed to be a six degree of freedom 3D game controller that is kind of based on industrial CAD and 3D design controllers. I have to give a massive thank you to Alexander for sending this boxed example over. He found it on eBay many years ago and shipped it over from Germany. And it's the only one in the box I've ever seen. Extremely rare, not very well known at all. Although it was one of those devices that was frequently advertised in magazines in the late 90s and online, but despite its many appearances in ads, it was barely reviewed and very few of them seemingly sold. Although sometime after I got mine, a Wired Up Retro on YouTube got one and made a video about it hooked up to a PlayStation, but apparently it broke after making that video, so that's a good sign. But yeah, I don't even know if these things were sold in physical retail stores. I know for sure that it was offered direct through SGRL, either over the phone or through their website. Possibly also Outpost.com. The company said that some SGRL products were available there, so maybe the sphere was. Either way, SGRL was behind it. Second Generation Research Laboratories Limited, a relatively small company founded in Barberton, Ohio in 1997, who, according to their website, were focused on designing and marketing innovative electronic products for commercial, industrial, and computer peripheral applications, and they were composed largely of electrical engineers, industrial designers, and the rest was marketing, it seems. And for a couple years, SGRL pushed hard to market a few different products, like these rechargeable battery kits for Game Boy Pocket and Game Boy Color systems. That's kind of cool, I didn't know those existed. As well as something called the Game Boy Spine, a cartridge storage thing. Deeply late 90s crap here. As well as a shock pad, game pad, and SGRL pistol light gun for the PlayStation, and various PlayStation 2 multi-tap docks. And they also planned to release something called the X-Board, a kind of snowboarding slash skateboarding slash surfing game peripheral designed for games like <laughs> Extreme Winter Sports and Extreme Boards and Blades. Some painful LGR throwbacks right there. But yeah, the sphere here was by far their most 
famous slash infamous device something they were banking on to really put them on the map in terms of uh, peripheral manufacturers with the SGRL CEO Brant Cook saying, we are confident in our abilities as innovators to produce products that will challenge gamers' minds at every level. Yeah, I bet. The Sphere is just first in a line of products that we believe will revolutionize the gaming industry. Well, PC's own magazine called the Titan Sphere the novelty controller of the month, which sums up the overall sentiment, I would say. Computer Gaming World was one of the few mainstream magazines giving it a full review, and they trashed the thing, giving it one and a half out of five stars, saying it was awkward to handle, tricky to calibrate, hard to learn, tiring to use, Although it wasn't all negative, uh, the Sphere actually came out on top as being the better controller compared to the Microsoft Sidewinder Force Feedback, at least according to Jevin Jenkins of Game Industry News in 1999. Despite this not having any Force Feedback, it really not being comparable to that stick at all. Uh, I mean, this is not a joystick after all. It says it like a hundred times on the marketing and on the, on the box, but you know what, whatever. Uh, they still planned to create a Titan Sphere 2 that was, I don't know, 30-ish percent smaller or something, but nope, that never happened. The company withered away. Anyway, it's enough of that. Let's open this up. Oop, oop, don't roll away. Yeah, despite its tendency to roll around like a ball and the claims that it is baseless, it does actually have a base, uh, a flat bottom right there, and um, it kind of holds in place, but it's not much of one. It really just, it tends to roll when you're not looking. In fact, the overall design reminds me of, I don't know, something from Star Wars Episode One or uh, one of those like rolly things that you use for exercising on the floor, ab work. As for uh, the way that this works, <laughs> uh, you have these two joystick appendages, arms, I don't know, sticking out of the side here, and they're just sort of cut into the ball. And so you've got three different kind of triggers in a way on the front of each one of those arms. Then there's another little button sort of hit away for your thumbs. Uh, a hat over here of a sort. I don't know, it's just four different buttons in a diamond pattern. A really sensitive little, little tiny throttle right there. It's very cheap feeling, all of this. The whole thing is oddly lightweight, but I don't know, you're supposed to be holding it up in midair to use for the most part, so you don't want it too heavy. But yeah, it's just a combination of of different balls and sticks uh, <laughs> and twisting and turning and bop it and twist it and bop it. That is a 15 pin game port device, not USB. So you'll need that kind of thing to plug it into or an appropriate adapter. And then uh, well, here's the thing, it comes with this or at least mine did, but this is not the adapter for it. This is actually an Interact USB adapter and these are not universal or anything. They're typically made for a very specific device. And in this case, I'm assuming it was the Cyclone 3D from Interact. This just happened to be in this box that I got, but I think the eBay -er seller packed it in there because they didn't know it wasn't supposed to go with it. Because yeah, this has nothing to do with the Titan Sphere. This is uh, something that goes to the Cyclone 3D. We won't be using this, it doesn't see it. And yeah, that is the Titan Sphere in a nutshell, or an eggshell, and it's not really egg-shaped. Anyway, let's get this plugged in to a Windows 98 PC, get those generic device drivers going, and uh, play us some games, see how revolutionary this oddware actually was. Okay, well, we've got it connected to a PC installed as much as I know how to do so because uh, no documentation, no software came with it, but as far as I know, there wasn't any software. And all of the write-ups that I found online uh, all say that it should just show up as a four axis, four button joystick, and it does. Fully calibrated it and everything, so uh, yeah, it's uh, as far as I can tell, working as it should. Uh, unfortunately, the POV hat, these are supposed to be, I think, an additional four buttons in addition to the four over here and the four over here, which are just duplicated. But these are also duplicated as the same four. So we just have four, but uh, yeah, everything else is working just as well as it can. So you have this really sensitive, teeny little throttle right there. 
and then this twists this way, and then this twists this way, but you can also sort of twist it the opposite direction, and then this uh, sort of twists around on its own, but it doesn't actually get to the corner axes right there, unless you also twist this one. Yeah, anyway, uh, calibrating it was a bit of a thing, just to try to get it all, and the problem is it doesn't center, like, ever? Like, it just never fully returns to center. I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> so, it's proven a bit of a thing just to even get it to, to work, but it does. So, for instance, starting up Duke 3D here, it's like, center the joystick. Well, it is centered, but, like, is it going to fully return to center? Uh, it's hard to tell. So, I kind of have to go over here and do the calibration. Yeah, see, it's not centered. So, that's centered. But it's not always centered that way, because you can just, you know, be moving around and now that's the center. It's, it's so iffy. It might just be a problem with this one. All right, so, I can already see it's kind of screwed up. So it's, it's just gonna, it, it thinks it's centered, but it's not. So it kind of does this no matter what game I'm trying. But uh, the, the idea anyway here is that you have, in, the, in this game, um, this right, whatever this is, appendage goes forward, backwards, and then you can sort of roll it that way to strafe, or you can do this to turn, which is interesting. And then this also goes forward and backward, but in the opposite. So if you hold this one in place, then this one moves independently. So backward is forward and forward is backward. Um, and it's constantly wanting to, okay, to sort of roll <laughs> as I'm moving forward, because this base that it has, is awful. There's not enough of it in place there. Yeah, go ahead and kill me. All right. I think they really did intend it to be a sort of baseless thing, as the box said. Uh, the problem is, now, when you do that, it means that you can't independently move this one. So for the games that want you to do that, and there are some we'll get to, uh, you kind of can't do that. You have to put it down. So really, the best way that I've found to use this thing is not floating or on the desk on the base, but kind of down here between my legs or like up against my chest or stomach or just something to kind of balance it in place. Uh, anyway, with it down here, I can actually sort of make this work uh, other than me, whoops. Okay, oh my goodness. I keep jumping because because this thing is a piece of shit. Um, because this, this button right here, or also this one, where your thumbs naturally rest, is the easiest to press button ever. You just barely move it, and you're pressing that button. So you almost have to like put your fingers down here, but then you're hitting this throttle or these other buttons, which is also a jump button, because then all the buttons are duplicated and the throttle becomes a problem. And I, I, this thing is immediately so bad. <laughs> Die. You know, I might be onto something here. This whole chin control situation isn't the worst. Because at least I'm holding it in place now. Like, this had to have been a little better back in the day, right? It had to have been. Because this is un unbearable. Oh my goodness! It... Uh, even if it's centered perfectly, though. Just, I don't understand this design. It's so odd. You'd think it might be better with something like Descent, right? Uh, even though they call out Duke 3D as being like, oh yeah, it's designed for that. Um, let me play Descent 2 here. It's just the one I have on here. All right, so we do have uh, the ability to kind of move around, but uh, and, you know, we can, we can shoot a couple of things. But most of the buttons don't work, and a lot of these other axes don't work either. The throttle doesn't work, the sort of twisting doesn't work for strafe or whatever. Uh, so yeah, for, for some reason, no matter what I do, and it's calibrated again in here, no matter which of these joysticks options that I choose, if we go in here, for some reason, 
nothing will show up. So I can't adjust flares or bombs or do any of the other things to remap them. And these I can change, like which axis does pitch and turn. Uh, the throttle shows up, but it shows up as like throttle for joystick two. And for some reason it does nothing. So yeah, I can't move forward, I can't move backwards. All I can do is really just sort of twist around in 3D space and shoot a couple of weapons and uh, that's that's it. Which, <laughs> so much for like kind of the ideal seeming situation for, for this. Uh, Six Degree of Freedom games were pretty much what these were designed for, especially something like the Space Orb 360. And you know, this part of it, this second appendage on the side, seems like it might be actually kind of good for a full 3D Six Degree of Freedom game. Um, except, you know, it doesn't have like the pushing and pulling and twisting and, and all that kind of stuff that made the, uh, the space orb so effective at that. I, I wish that I could uh, try it a little bit more, but no matter what I change, options wise, it just doesn't work. So when I was testing this, I was just like, okay, we got to try something that has some decent joystick support, right? Uh, Unreal Tournament, let's get that going. Now this doesn't have specific support for this. I don't know that anything ever did. Uh, again, it didn't come with any disks or software to uh, have mapping directly for this. Maybe there used to be on the website, but none of the downloads are still available. Uh, anyway, it's, so it just shows up as a, a normal joystick. I've remapped it a bit to try and make it work. We have uh, looking up and down, rotating this way. For some reason, the rolling doesn't work to strafe like it did with Duke 3D. That axis just is not detected in, in UT at all. So I can't strafe, um, but I can move forward. So, and backward. Okay, very badly. Wow, that's a great, great start. <laughs> this, is, this is the, I don't know, actually, this might not be the worst way I've played UT, but it's pretty bad. Kill us both. Take us out of our misery. Oh, really? Got knocked out of the way by the rocket and now I'm still alive. How unfortunate. Because of the way this sensoring works or doesn't work, it's like there's a, a massive dead zone and then there's just like tons of movement. Like it's like nothing, 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 nothing. Look at this. No movement at all. And then lots of movement. And there's pretty much no way to change that. I mean, you can change what the X and Y axis do. I just have it put this way because it kind of sort of made sense. Uh, but even the other way, yeah, you still run into the same issue, the sensitivity. And again, why doesn't it support doing this way? So you can strafe, don't know. Duke 3D lets you do it, this doesn't. So UT is kind of a bust. Well, how about some GTA 3? Yes, I was playing this recently anyway, so I figured why not? So like UT, this really just has kind of generic joystick de device support. Uh, but, eh, you know, we have the ability to get Claude to walk around and whatnot. So I've just remapped some buttons to uh, make him move forward and backward because um, doing this just kind of makes him walk. And then to make him run, you have to push this one backwards, They're both at the same time in order to get quicker movement. <laughs> uh, anyway, I know this is not the type of game it's made for, but it's, it's still really, really annoying. So uh, as for steering, again, an analog method for a car or whatever, uh, this actually seems like it would, it could be <laughs> pretty good. It isn't because it sucks, but if it, if it didn't suck and like actually properly auto-centered and wasn't so darn sensitive and like that dead zone issue is happening again, uh, yeah, if you could, if you could make it good and work properly, then I think this would actually be pretty cool for driving or, you know, steering and an analog method. Cause, um, I don't know, there's something about this, this twisting over here with this right hand appendage that actually kind of works. Yeah, I don't have uh, aiming <laughs> mapped to this thing, so I gotta do this to shoot the RPG. Anyway, um, yeah, it almost kind of works for, uh, for driving, which really got me thinking. 
with those reviewers back in the day comparing it to the Microsoft Sidewinder. How about Motocross Madness, which some of the Sidewinders were pretty much literally designed for. Thank goodness in here you can actually adjust that sensitivity. So we're gonna do that. Yeah. So I believe the way it works is um, this should be, yeah, leaning forward and backward, sort of. Uh, anyway, uh, and then this rocking around steers you like that in a sort of analog fashion. Again, a terrible dead zone. You can see how long it takes to, to kick in there. There it is. <laughs> yeah. Other than that, this is actually pretty okay. Um, I'm not sure I'd call it better than the uh, the Sidewinder Force Feedback or the, 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 what is that other one, the Freestyle or whatever. But, you know, it's all right for a game like this, especially since, uh, you know, adjust that sensitivity and it's just that, that auto centering, which I, it's, I've got to assume it's just kind of broken or worn out or I don't know. This gets me at least to the point where I could imagine this almost being cool for a game like this. Um, I still don't like it, but I can almost see uh, the use case for it. There we go. <laughs> we got to. It's Motocross Madness. All right, one more thing. A flight game, right? Because, you know, that's another one that they specifically called out as being ideal somehow for this. Like, it's better than joysticks. Let's try some jeans. USAF, United States Air Force. It's just the demo. I don't know where my CD is, but it works the same. Go over here to controls. We've got a normal flight joystick with rudder slash pedals, throttle, the dead zone or dead band, uh, you can adjust that a bit, which is cool. Let's go, uh, actually, let's go to an external view so we can see what's going on. So this is the only game that I've tried so far that has a working throttle control, so you can see you can turn on the afterburner there. It's an extremely sensitive, very light throttle, and it's kind of awful. I'm constantly hitting it with my thumb and adjusting it when I don't mean to, but it is what it is, at least it works here. Uh, and then controls are a little bit odd. Um, Controlling your yaw or rudder is right here. Twisting sort of just this way, which that makes sense. Uh, this controls your roll. So that's cool. And then pitch is the weirdest one, okay? So you'd think, ah, oh, you could just do this or this or this or this. Nope, you gotta do them both in the opposite direction. So in order to pitch up, we'll need to do forward over here and then back on the right. Like that, and then it's the opposite to pitch down. Which also means you're kind of rolling and yawing and doing all sorts of crap at the same time because of the odd sensitivity. I can tell you one thing, it is anything but intuitive to fly a plane this way. <laughs> What's going on? Oh, it's bad. Talk to me, goose. <laughs> I can't, I got a Titan sphere. Well, so it goes. Man, this thing is just... It's so, so bad. I am kind of shocked. So here's the thing. Assuming everything on the Titan Sphere worked perfectly, as if it just left the factory, like the sticks return to exact center every time and the dead zone and acceleration was flawless, I still would not care for this thing. Even if it was perfectly calibrated, the overall design baffles me. It, it, it moves all over the place on a desk. It's tiresome in handling this thing in midair as it seems to be intended. And when you actually like hold it in place down somewhere on yourself or wherever, it, no, it's still just bad. The entire layout, there's nowhere to easily place your fingers and thumbs. Any logical resting spots are taken up by all of the buttons and the throttle, so gripping it to properly twist it around is uncomfortable. 
The core concept here is just iffy. Sure, 3D gaming was taking off in the late 90s on PC. SGRL wanted to make a 3D controller as their flagship product, but taking a 3D space ball kind of device and then making the ball part huge and attaching twistable joysticks to the ball instead of twisting the little ball itself, it's a bizarre choice. And I don't think that the proposed Titan Sphere 2 that would have been I don't know, 30% smaller or whatever, would have improved things that much. The whole concept is downright odd to me. Perfect for LGR oddware, extremely awkward for anything else. And if you enjoyed this bit of weirdness, check out my other LGR episodes on various oddities of the past or stick around for more continually in the works. I have no shortage of strangeness here. And as always, thanks for watching.